I was trying to be the first guy from South Carolina to win the RBC Heritage. I did everything I could do coming down the stretch. Dead center. We're going to a playoff. I know what his talent level is, but to see him make those clutch putts in that situation, if I just, you know, couldn't be more proud. But he couldn't match 17-time PGA Tour winner Jim Furyk in the end. I can't sit here and say if I had to do over, I'd change anything I did coming down the stretch. It was just Jim's time. Less than a month later, the players, Kisner would find himself on the losing end of another playoff. Ricky Fowler owns the island green. I thought I won in, in regulation. I hit a great putt like I wanted to and, and uh, just didn't happen, but uh, I have more chances. That next chance would come at the Greenbrier, where Kisner would play himself into a four-man playoff, only to see his chances disappear in the grass. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Can't believe that, can you? Golf will do that to you. While those close calls on golf's biggest stages were disappointing, it's not a surprise that Kisner was on the cusp of victory. I've won all over a lot of different tournaments, different levels. I've always been pretty good in that position. A four-time All-America and national champion at the University of Georgia, Kisner turned pro in 2006 and won several mini-tour titles before reaching the Web.com Tour and notching his first win at the 2010 Milan Classic. I made like a six-footer for par on the last hole. When I got done, my caddy said, if he doesn't birdie 18, you're gonna win, and I had no idea. The next thing I know, I'm winning out of that tournament. He finished 11th on the money list, earning his PGA Tour card for the 2011 season, but couldn't translate that success onto the PGA Tour. Oh, I struggled really badly on the first two years on the PGA Tour. Got my card back through tour school, but still struggled again the second year. In the 2011 and 2012 PGA Tour seasons, Kisner managed only one top 10, making just 20 of 48 cuts, with his best finish in the FedEx Cup coming at 153rd. So it was back to the Web.com Tour in 2013, where he won his third start at the Chile Classic. Anytime you win, it's a great accomplishment. You build confidence in yourself. I knew coming down the stretch what I needed to do, and to be able to do it is awesome. That quick start set him up to get his PGA Tour card back, and this time the South Carolinian was ready for the jump. Spent the rest of that year kind of rebuilding my game to get ready. I knew that my ball striking was lacking from my two previous stints on the PGA Tour. And the rebuild to his ball striking is evident, as Kisner has improved in that category each of his four years on tour. As a result, his scoring average has also dropped consistently, with his best mark coming in 2014-15, when he ranked in the top 60 in ball striking and the top 30 in scoring average. I've seen the improvements, and I'm just glad to see the benefits of working so hard on it. The time put in showed up last season as he doubled his top 10s from 2013-14, finishing a career best 21st in the FedEx Cup, earning a trip to the Tour Championship by Coca-Cola. What a 12 months for Kevin. And given his past success, Kisner knows that a finish at the top of the leaderboard is well within reach. Stay to your plan and keep going. One of these weeks, I'll, I'll make some putts and win one of these tournaments.